Psalm 51. Psalm number 51. We do have uh, tickets for sale for the uh, banquet, the Valentine's banquet for February 12th. They are $25, just like they were last year. Hey, inflation and everything's gone up, but our tickets hadn't gone up, all right? So it is $25 a ticket for the Valentine banquet. Uh, that it will be that Sunday night, February 12th. And so it is $25 a ticket. And then we do have a fundraiser. Uh, we are selling $1 tickets for a youth fundraiser. Uh, it, it, you have a chance to win a Rock Island Armory shotgun uh, if you buy tickets on the fundraiser uh, for a dollar a piece. Uh, the more tickets you buy, the uh, better chance you have. Well, one, the more tickets you buy, the more we're able to support the youth. Right? That's the main goal. Uh, this is the, the, the Rock Island shotgun. That, that's just uh, a byproduct of you supporting the youth. Right, and so the more of those you sell, the more you'll be able to support the youth and have an opportunity to walk away with a nice shotgun. I'm going to try to bring it over here Sunday morning uh, so people can see. If you do get that, we will go to Pig Supply in Highlands, and you can do your paperwork there. And so that way, uh, yeah. now I'm going to say, if it comes back and you don't get it, it goes straight to me. If the paperwork comes back and they say, nope, it's coming straight to me, so better have your ducks in a row. All right. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway, I mean, we're going to have an exciting night. There's going to be other things going on that night, and so support the youth, all right? You can see uh, Brother Jason and Miss Lauren about getting your tickets for the uh, – banquet on february 12th that sunday evening all right now that you have found your place in psalm 51 i invite you to stand as we honor god with the reading of his word of course we're going to read all of psalm 51 uh, and so psalm 51 as we know this is uh, to the mu musician a psalm of david when nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into bathsheba have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou, uh, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness and burnt offering and whole uh, burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. 
Let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss these, this psalm, Lord, I ask that you would help us to stay focused, that you would help us to be engaged, Lord, that the Spirit would flow freely tonight into every heart, into every mind, Lord, uh, speaking thy word tonight, Lord. I uh, ask that you would have your will and your way tonight, Father, for it is in Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, I want to speak to you tonight on the subject, David's restoration, David's restoration. Uh, we discussed uh, verses 1 through 9 uh, two weeks ago, and I want to kind of just run through that with you real quick. Uh, we discussed uh, uh, two weeks ago about hope for the guilty. Uh, of course, we note that this is a psalm of David when Nathan, uh, the preacher, the prophet, came and pointed to David and told him about his sin. And we see the first thing we saw in verses 1 and 2 here was David's cry for mercy. And uh, the only hope for mercy is with God, right? That's the only way, it's the only person, the only place we are going to get mercy is from God. And he, David looks to God for mercy for what he had done and... Uh, and so, and, and he knows that without God's mercy, there is no hope. And we went to Isaiah 64 and talked about how David, or how Isaiah talked how we were unclean thing and how our, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And uh, David knows God, and David knew God's character, uh, that uh, how uh, God uh, showed mercy. And we talked about in Exodus where uh, Moses went to see and saw and and how that God uh, would uh, said that he would show mercy on whom he would show mercy and that David knew this and knew God was a God of mercy and how uh, that's why he went to God for mercy and and not only he asked for mercy but he asked for mercy for forgiveness and the last part of verse one and verse two and. And we know that David, when he's asking this, he asked God for an enormous request uh, because of his rebellion towards God. And that's what he. That's why he asked that uh, he would blot out his sin and and wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And we we talked about the reason why it's an enormous request is because our sin is enormous. Our sin is egregious to God. It's, uh, it's uh, we when we sin, we rebel against God, and that's what David did. And he's asking for mercy, and God's love and mercy is so great because our crimes against Him, our sin is against Him, is so great. And then we see in verses three through nine where David confesses his sin. Listen, as believers, even though we're saved, uh, I cannot stress the importance of confessing your sin. We need to confess our sin. Because if we don't confess, well, we just say, well, it's all washed anyway. Well, you're not going to have the restoration that you seek. Yes, you'll be saved for eternity. But it, when you're confessing your sin before God, what really what you're asking for is what we're discussing tonight, restoration. To restore that fellowship between you and God. And so... Uh, David, he confesses his sin. He, he knows he sinned against God, and he says, against you only have I sinned. Uh, and so David admits he's committed evil before the Lord and that he has sinned. Listen, not, we, we discussed not only did he commit adultery with Bathsheba, but he committed murder, right? And then we also, if we look uh, in, in verses, I think it's 14, where he talks about uh, he wants God to deliver him from his blood guiltiness. And so uh, he admits his sin. And uh, he and not only does he admit his sin. He admits that he, the source of his sin. He's, listen, it's been since birth. That's one thing we all, we all need to confess. We've been sinners since birth. Right? Because of Adam and Eve. And so he goes, I, it's been, I said, I've had this problem since birth. 
And so uh, then he, in verses 7 through 9, he, he asked for forgiveness of his sin and to be cleansed from his sin because he wants to return to worship with God. And uh, that was 7 through 9. And, and now we're going to get through verses 10 through 17. Uh, David's restoration. If we look at verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David here is pleading for restoration. Restoration. David wants that clean heart. Uh, listen, we, ask, we do need to confess and we do need to ask God to forgive us. But we need that restoration. David knows his sin has affected himself. Listen, we know that our sin affects others, right? We, David's sin greatly affected others, did it not? But he also knows it affected himself. This is why he says, create in me a clean heart. When we sin, it affects our soul. And we need that restoration. And, and I want you to look here in, in, in the verses 10 through 17. We're going to dive into these things that about his restoration that David wants. And, and so the more we sin and not deal with our sin, what happens is we deaden or we wound our conscience and we are grown. We tend to grow colder and colder towards God and towards His people. We've all seen that. Do you remember that commercial back in the '80s where this is your brain and it was a frying pan? And they cracked an egg. This is your brain on drugs. It's fine. Well, every, when the more we sin, the more we deaden our conscience. Remember, remember when you first. Most of us can remember when we first. Most of us won't admit this, but most of us have seen a pornographer, a pornography picture of some sort. You remember when you first saw that, the fear that came over you? Because you knew you did something wrong. Whether you sought out that, that image, that video, whatever, whatever that is, especially with teenagers, you get that fear of trembling. It's like that excitement or that fear, that nervousness. Well, the more we sin the less that goes on. Why? Because we've hardened and we've what we call seared the conscience and we've deadened that conscience. The more we sin, the colder we grow towards our conscience. Listen, God gave us a conscience for a reason. He gave us a conscience to let us know we've done wrong against him. And so the more we sin, the more we deaden. And David, he knows that. That's why he says, uh, create. In me a clean heart, O oh God. And he says, what? Restore, renew a, a right spirit within me. When he says create a, in me a clean heart, that word create is the same word that we get with God creating creation. Only God can do that. Listen, only God can create a new heart. That's it. God, you, you, you can say, well, I've, I've done this, I've done that, and listen, only God can only give you that new desire. You, you, you can't just create your own desire to serve God. You cannot create your own, uh, we, don't, we can't create our own salvation, right? We know that. But you can't create that clean heart. Only God can do that. And, and so, David, that's what he's wanting. He's wanting God to create a clean heart into him and and so uh, uh the more we sin the more we, we engage with sin the easier it becomes and so david wants more than just forgiveness he wants to be forgiven but he's wanting that restoration that renewing i'm not saying he's asking more from god than what uh, god would give him as in salvation no, he's wanting that restoration you can have forgiveness but you may not have that restoration because this is what David's talking about. God, you know, you can confess your, your sin against God, uh, sin against God, but you've got to take you got to have that renewing, that restoration. 
See, he admitted his sin. We discussed that, right, uh, in the first verses 1 through 9, how he talked about and, con and confessed his sin. Now he's wanting, he's wanting forgiveness, and he's wanting restoration. David needs the Lord to do a work in his soul. Listen, there's a lot, when I say that being restoration, there's a lot of folks who are forgiven, but they're not restored. They don't, what I mean by restoration, we're talking about this fellowship. Because we, we, we're going to talk here in a little bit, and I think it's in verse number 13, about the passion. He wants passion again to serve God. Listen, there's a lot of folks who have sinned that are Christians and members of churches, but they've not restored that fellowship. They have no desire to serve God anymore. They have no desire to serve, and they're like, you know, I'm forgiven, I'm thankful, I will, I will attend, you know, I'll come to church, but there's no desire to do anything anymore for the Lord. They have, you know, they, they've, they've allowed that sin to affect their heart so much that they have that no desire anymore. And, and you can see that when, when we give in to the flesh, the more we give in to the flesh, the more that desire flees. 100% right there. The more we give in the flesh, the less we want to fellowship with God. And so here, uh, David, he's wanting that renewing. He wants uh, that uh, restoration. He needs the Lord to do a work in his heart. And David wants a renewed heart. What, he, David wants a pure heart that desires what is right in God's sight. He says uh, in, in verse uh, number 10, he says, renew a right spirit within me. He goes, I want to, I want the desire, I want what, I want the desire, what you say is right, I want to agree with that, that's right. You know, there's, there are believers out there, well, this is, it, listen, it is God's will for you and I to be sanctified, Right? Not only to be sanctified, but every day in our sanctification, growing closer and closer and closer to the will to God, right? To the image of Christ. Well, it is God's will that you and I not do certain things. Because doing those certain things will cause us to hinder or slow down our sanctification because we've put things in front of God. We all on the same page here? When we go off and what, since I talked about pornography, the more you go out and you look at those things, you're slowing your sanctification down. Why? Because you are putting things in front of God, and you are no longer have a desire to conform to the image of Christ, but to worship the flesh. You see what I'm saying here? The, 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 I, I'm trying to help you here. The more we give into the flesh, the more we are slowing down and halting our sanctification, because sanctification means separated unto God. We're saved, it's going to be eternally, right? But sanctification is what we're talking about. And so uh, David, he's like, I want to, what you say is right, I want to say is right. He, he wants the desire of what's right in God's sight. So he says, create in, clean, uh, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And so David wants a renewed heart. The second thing in verse 11 we see here is David wants a renewed calling. Look at verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So David fears God will cast him away from being king. How did David become king in the first place? Saul. Did you know God removed the Holy Spirit from Saul? He did. God gave Saul the Holy Spirit, anointed him with the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is David. He doesn't want God to take that away. This is why he because Saul sinned. Now, did David do anything? Was David's sin uh, not as bad as Saul's? No, sin, sin, right? 
And sin is equal, and so David, he, he, he doesn't want God to cast him away from being king. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So in that very same chapter, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Spirit left from Saul, and it came and anointed David. David was anointed as king. So here David's saying, I don't want my, I, 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 don't, I want you to renew my calling. I, I need that renewed heart. I don't want you, David saying, I don't want you to take the spirit away uh, from me, his calling. Now, let's talk about the New, the, the New Testament. We know we are sealed until the day of redemption, right? But look at what I want you to show, I want to show you what Paul says. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul's not talking about losing the Holy Spirit. What he's talking about is I don't want to be disqualified because I've done what I've preached against. This is, the, this is the same thing. So when we sin against God and we don't get right, we won't have the effect on others that God wants us to have. This is David saying, cast me not out. Don't. This is what he, as a believer, we want to have we don't want to be a castaway, as Paul is saying. I don't want to be disqualified. We're still going to have the Holy Spirit, right? We're sealed. But we have slowed down our sanctification, so to speak. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not trying to get too deep where it's all, where you're like, he's gone off the left side. That's not what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm, not, I'm not trying to say, get where you think that, but we, we do need to dig up a little bit. Dig into the Word of God a little bit. And so, uh, this is what David is saying. He, he wants a, re, uh, the third thing we see here in verse number 12 through 13 is, David wants a renewed passion. Verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. He wants a renewed passion. Because when, sin, when, we, the more we, uh, when we sin and the more we allow sin into our life, listen, the passion for God, the passion for serving God, it dwindles. Listen, the more we sin... Where we allow sin into our life, that passion that we have that we that love that loves God, that loves his church, that loves his people, it will soon disappear. We've all seen people that that has happened to. You might not understand that it's ha that's what happens, but it's happened to them, but you're you notice they're no longer here and you wonder why they're not here. It's because they've allowed sin into their life, whatever it is. How big or small, that on your Richter scale, it doesn't matter how big or small it is. Because sin is, when sin sneaks in, and it, you don't get right, and you don't restore that fellowship with God, uh, then your passion for serving Him, your passion for loving Him, your passion for loving His church, His people, in turn, which is His people, that will disappear. That passion will disappear. Disappear. Why? Because Satan will pull all things to put in its way, in its spot. Satan will do whatever he can to keep you from having that passion uh, to serve God, to love God. And so David, he go. It's what he wants. He said, he, he, he says, renew unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so David, he wants the. Not only does he want uh, the, the passion, his passion, uh, uh, David's heart has been affected by his sin, and now his passion for God and witnessing for him ha has seemed to do his spirit. He goes, I want that passion, and if I, can, if I can have that renewer, if I can be restored, David's saying, restore me. Once I'm restored, then I have that passion to witness. 
I can tell you right now, every single believer that has repeated sin in their life has no desire to witness for him. Not just witness and sharing the gospel, but but just being a general witness of how good God is to them. You have no desire to talk about God in front of others, except for maybe those you know that go to church or that are faithful to church. Then they'll, they'll try to, they'll talk a little bit. David says, restore unto me, and I'll witness. I'll t- because when you're not restored to God, you have no desire to witness. And so David, he, he, he's seeking and he's praying and asking God for that restoration because he wants that passion back. And he wants a renewed praise. Look at verses 14 through 17. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, and thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. He wants a renewed praise. It's very difficult to praise God when sin is present in your life. He wants to praise and worship God as a result of God's forgiveness. Look at, let's turn to Psalm 32 real quick. Look at Psalm 32. It's just a, little, a few pages back. Psalm 32, verse 1, he says, Blessed, happy, right, is he whose transgressions are, what's that, Nick? That's that, what's that word? Forgiven, whose sin is what? Covered, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. And so, David, as he's writing this in Psalm uh, 32, listen. To be forgiven means you have something to sing about. We can praise God because we're forgiven. And you can, it's easy to praise God when you've been forgiven, but not only forgiven, but restored. I mean, there's a lot of folk, I mean, listen, I see all y'all when you sing. And teenagers, you know, you can see, and it's just barely the lips moving. But when you've been restored and that passion is, you that passion has been restored, listen, you might seem like Kurt. Some of you don't know who Kurt is. Everybody can hear Kurt above everybody else. You can, and I'm sure you can hear me up here. And, and I'm sorry you have to hear it, but listen, you're going to hear it. But this is what Christ, he wants, he was like, I want to praise you. Listen, it was almost, it was about two years from when the sin happened to when Nathan came. Listen, that's a long time. Two years is a long time to have God's heavy hand upon you. Because that's what sin does. Sin puts a heavy hand of God on you. Why? We deserve it. We sinned. Right? And so David, he wants to praise and worship God as a result of his forgiveness. So the question uh, that we can uh, get out of here is, okay, my sin, I've asked for forgiveness for it. Why don't I have the passion, love for God that I once had? Because you haven't sought restoration. We... Listen, you want to you wanna have that restoration? Yes, you get the forgiveness, right? We're, we're saved, we're forgiven for eternity. But look at David. His, the, what he's saying here, this is his heart's desire to be restored back, to have that restoration. question is, do you need restoration tonight? Do you have sin in your life that you just can't seem 
to get rid of? Do you have apathy in your life? Do you have no desire to serve God? Well, you need restoration. Is there sin that you've committed that you haven't truly confessed? There's a difference between truly confessing and then just saying, Lord, forgive me for my sins. There's a difference between owning it and a general a general statement. You want listen, you want that restoration? Own it. Truly confess. David said, Against you have I sinned. You only have I sinned. Confess it. Truly confess it. And seek God's restoration because David. He sought restoration. God gave it to him. He is, God is merciful. If you seek restoration to be renewed, God's the only one that can do it. Doesn't matter how I say, if, well, I'm going to church. Well, good, you need to go to church. You need to get God's word. But until you get one-on-one with him, until you own up what you've done, doesn't matter how big or small it is in your eyes. It's just a swat lie. Sin, sin. We still have to get one on one with it. Do you need? Are you? Do you need restoration? Are you seeking that renewal from God that David is seeking? Will you truly lay your heart before the Lord and allow him to do that work? David wanted God to work in his soul. His, his sin has affected him. Do you, will you actually lay your heart out and say, Lord, I, it's here. Work and not hinder the work. I, listen, I, I've been there. I've said God work and then I've said, oh, let, let's set this aside. I've done that in my past. God, I want you to work. Yes, I do. But I don't want you to work that hard. You know, I, I want to serve you. But you know, I, I want to do this too. It's not that God doesn't work that way. Until you actively passionately seek that restoration, that fellowship with God, you're going to have a long road to hoe. I'm not saying you're not going to be forgiven. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying it's gonna have, you're going to have a hard, it's going to be hard leading your kids and being the spiritual leader of your household men if you're not willing to own it before the Lord and actively seek him. Listen, that's the biggest problem in churches today. Men do not want to be the spiritual leaders of their household. That's why your average church has more women than men that attend, that are faithful attendant. Why? Because we as men, we don't like to own up to our mistakes, do we? We will give every excuse in the book and we'll pass the buck. Why? Because that's why God told us to love our wives as Christ loved the church because it's hard to love somebody else as much as we love ourselves. Right? See, there's a point right there. She's like, we're men. We need more spiritual leaders in churches today. And I don't mean more pastors and things of that nature. And what I'm saying is we need men to be the spiritual leaders of their home. I could go into verses 18 and 19 and talk how David, now that he's been restored, he's asking God to bless nationally but folks when we sin 
We need to seek the mercy of God, ask for forgiveness, and seek that restoration because of what we have done, because of our sin. Have you sought that restoration? It could have been something you've done today. Maybe you have no, you're like, I really don't want to be here tonight, but I'm here. If that's you, you need restoration. You need that passion back in you that David wanted to serve God, to love God, to love his people, which means love his church. David's restoration. You need a prayer? You just got one right there, Psalm 51. David has a lot of psalms, a lot of prayers that he prays. It's a, it's, psalms is a great book of prayer and how to pray when you're needing something from God. Because David knew God. He knew how to get a hold of God. Father,